Welcome back. This is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about digestive enzymes. What does it do? Where can you get it? And what kind of foods can you eat to help improve digestive enzymes? So let's get right into it. Digestive enzymes help to break down foods. So your carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. The pancreas produces and releases amylase, lipase, and protease. The interesting fact is, in the past, they used to think that the pancreas would continuously produce these digestive enzymes. However, more recent literature will show that digestive enzymes can be reabsorbed and recycled through the pancreas. The mouth produces amylase and lipase, Stomach produces protease. So what does the enzymes do? Lipase breaks down carbohydrates, sugars, and starches. Lipase breaks down fats. Protease breaks down protein. Sucralase breaks down sucrose. Lactylase breaks down lactose. This is an interesting one. DPP4 breaks down gluten and dairy proteins. So that's good to have when you go out and eat at restaurants and you're gluten sensitive. So you're trying to avoid gluten and on a gluten-free diet, but accidental exposure is very common when you eat out. So when you eat out, you might want to add in DPP4 to help prevent gluten reactions. Now, this is not meant to be uh, used so you could have more gluten. It's meant for accidental exposures and certainly celiac patients should absolutely avoid gluten. So there are more enzymes than the ones that I listed. Obviously there's a lot more uh, in terms of different breaking down different types of uh, particles in, in our system. Now the digestive process starts with a thought and a smell. So if you think about food Think about it for a second. Your saliva production will increase. If you smell something, think about smelling a lemon. Automatically, your saliva will start to produce more, right? So the thought and smell will start to improve or increase the enzyme production in the mouth. And then your stomach will go, hmm, we're going to get ready for food. It's going to increase HCL and pepsin and the pancreas will start to kick out more amylase, lipase, and protease into our system. <clears throat> now, digestive enzymes, what are the clinical signs uh, that you may have a problem with digestive enzymes? Gallstones, autoimmunity, like celiac disease or Crohn's disease. Pancreatitis, because pancreas produces um, the amylase, lipase, and protease. Bloating, gas, bowel movement changes, diarrhea, constipation, use of antacids, excessive stress, floating stools, mean greasy stools, that you're not able to break down your fats and your, your stool will actually float in the water. Indigestion, and I already mentioned gas and bloating. So where do we get digestive enzymes? So you can get one from animal sources like porcelain and bovine, basically pig and cow. You can also get plant-based, papain from papaya, bromelain from pineapples, okay? And they both help to break down protein. So these plant-based uh, digestive um, formulas will also help break down protein. Kiwis has something called actinidin, which is also helping breaking down proteins. You have mangoes that produce amylase. Raw honey is also uh, advantageous. Avocados, interesting, they pay, it produces lipase or has lipase in it because avocado is a fat and lipase breaks down fats. Bananas, amylase, and glucosidase. So a lot of these plant-based uh, foods can also help break down uh, proteins and fats and carbohydrates. Other foods that can be beneficial, fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, ginger, kefir, which is a fermented milk, lemon juice, celery juice, dandelion root. 
So if you use or implement some of this into your diet, uh, you might need uh, less of taking digestive enzyme, HCL, and so forth. So it's important to have some of this in your diet. Other considerations. I, obviously, you can supplement digestive enzymes plus HCL, plus pepsin, ox bile. Cofactors like B vitamins and minerals are also very important uh, cofactors that are needed for uh, enzyme production. Also, you will need the correct pH in our stomach. So the pH stomach runs around two, two and a half, three. So you need the correct pH in the stomach and proper temperature to activate these enzymes. So what that means is that if you're if you're taking a lot of ants at if you're taking a lot of antacids, the pH is not going to be low enough to activate some of these enzymes and the proper temperature. Also, when you look at things like protease, it's in the stomach. It helps to break down proteins in the stomach. The stomach pH activates the protease. However, when the protein gets into the small intestine, the pH changes, right? Once the pH changes, protease is not as active. So you need another enzyme called uh, trypsin which will help break down protein in the small intestine. So digestive enzymes can be pretty complicated, but if you just break it down and very simply say, do I have issues or signs and symptoms? And then can we add in some of these foods that can be advantageous? If not, we can add in animal sources, plant sources of digestive enzymes, and more foods that have, quote unquote, digestive enzymes in them. So it's very important to understand because you need to break down your foods uh, appropriately to the proper amino acids so it can be absorbed and utilized by your own healthy tissues. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.